You gotta be pretty dumb to rob a Las Vegas casino these days, even dumber to do it before a gaggle of Vegas cops. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. And gotta be honest with you, this is one of the dumber robbers I've ever seen in my life. Want to take your knowledge beyond the narrated videos? Join us on Active Self Protection Extra and subscribe for multiple videos every week to help you get better in your defensive skills. To go watch the media briefing from Las Vegas Metro PD on this, the guy hustling out of the casino here has just robbed it and is actually who robbed the same casino in 2017. And he's got a bunch of money with him that he's taken from the casino. He gets in this BMW, but it doesn't have any keys in it. And so then he goes back to a black car back behind and he starts now trying to get into this black BMW by pulling on the handle. And when that doesn't open the door, you're gonna see here, he is actually gonna draw a pistol. It's a little Diamondback 380 and he is gonna tap on the glass with it. Now, if you were paying attention, you saw there were four bicycle Las Vegas Metro PD officers uh, to his right, and when he taps on the glass, they're getting a radio transmission that he's there. Now, he actually shoots and hits one of the officers in the vest, and if you watch here in the slow-mo, you can see that as he's going here, watch the officers coming around to our left, and, and the one that's in the lead, he is actually, the bad guy's gonna drive his gun out there and take one shot, hit that officer square in the vest. The officer that's still on screen now is going to then draw his firearm and put one shot in the bad guy hitting him in the head and that guy took the asphalt temperature challenge from that now as we see it from the other angle he's getting you know and, and trying to see what's going on here they are all coming around you're going to see the officer come around the back side of the car put one shot on the guy and that's it and now we have badge cams as well to see what happened from the perspective of the officer that ended the threat here is that you saw that's our bad guy that just walked across towards the left of the screen here. And these officers haven't even heard that anything bad's going on, but he's dumb enough to do this right in front of them. And they are now about to hear over the radio that there is an active robber who is trying to get into a car on the outside right where they're at. And they're like, wait, what? What is going on here? And as soon as they hear that, they go and see that guy. Now they're gonna pile off the bikes and go get him. And our officer in question is going to take that one shot and end the threat. And that's where this one ends. Pretty intense stuff, lots of lessons to learn out of this one. If you wanna get better with your self-defense skills, join us at the Cover Your Asp Tour. We travel all over the country teaching handgun skills, empty-handed skills, mindset, church safety, all kinds of stuff. Hit the link in the description and find when we'll be in your area. Come and join us, I promise you'll learn something. Now, let's get to the lessons. Takes an awful lot of chutzpah here for this guy to do this for the second time. But notice a couple of things here as, as things get going. People are this brave and bold. Don't expect robbers to think like you do because they'll do this kind of thing and, and thinking that it's right for them. Okay, fine. So he doesn't find any keys in the getaway car that he was hoping for. So now he's going to come and try to basically carjack somebody who is just waiting in line to get in and enjoy their time in Las Vegas. Rule number one here, we talk about this on the channel all the time, is lock your dang doors. Most cars, when you put them in drive and modern cars, lock the doors around them. I I would encourage you if you can unset when they unlock when you put the car in park to do so. I, this car was not in park, it was clearly moving, but my point is is that I want you to get in the car, lock the doors, leave them locked until you choose to unlock them. That barrier is incredibly important. Now then, that's not gonna dissuade this guy completely. He is going to say, okay, wait a minute, let me in, and he's, he's arguing with these folks, and they say, no, that's very wise. I'm not letting you in my car, dude. That's not what's happening. Now he's going to go ahead and draw a firearm and tap on the glass with it. Now, of course, this is instantly aggravated assault. This guy is brandishing a firearm in order to impose his will. He absolutely is a deadly threat objectively and reasonably in this moment. That said, if the person inside the car was armed, you could see he's actually not paying attention to the person inside the car. He's actually not having eyes on them. So this is an opportunity for a counter ambush. If you have your firearm on your person and it's ready to go, certainly would be justified in this case to use it. One of the great reasons I always say, keep your firearm on your person and be ready to use that in a moment and watch the transitional space of a parked car. Now then, this officer comes in and he gets the first one and it goes and I do want to notice as we get into the slow-mo here what happens as these guys interact. So he's going to see this and the officers are of course coming and piling out on this guy but I don't think they can see the gun at this point. So you see the gun's actually right up against the glass. They know this guy's an armed robber so you can see the officer who is uh, the closest to us on the left-hand side who has his hand on his gun because they will use that to, comp uh, to compel compliance all the time. But I don't think he sees the fact that this guy has a gun in his hand. If he saw that he had a gun in his hand, I think the guns would be farther out and would be definitely being used in that moment. 
but it is something that's interesting to us to see the fact that what we see on video is not necessarily what the officer can see in the moment or the private citizen. It is a limitation of video. Now, our bad guy takes a shot and notice what that does to the officer. It gives him the fibs factor, even though he was wearing his ballistic vest, even though it did not penetrate his ballistic vest, thank God he was wearing it, it still causes the fibs factor because it doesn't mean he doesn't feel it. And it feels like getting hit in the chest with a sledgehammer is what I have heard from the multiple guys that I've talked to who have been hit while wearing their ballistic protection. So you're still gonna experience the fibs factor, still why having incredible emotional fitness is incredibly important and understanding how to fight through that pain. Now then, he runs off, but of course he is 100% a deadly threat. And in this moment, he is looking back at the officers and I wanted to see what the, the officer has as a shot here. And what we're gonna see is this is about a seven to eight yard shot that he's taking and it is a headshot. And notice that that guy turns right to the side of him. So a lot of times when we're looking at headshots as self-defenders and as police officers, we look at them head on, but sometimes you gotta look at them side on as well and recognize what target that you might have to shoot is not going to look like an ocular cavity, but rather it's gonna look like a side on view. And you gotta know where to put the round there and have the marksman to do that too. Now, as we're continuing on and looking from the case of, you know, the third camera, this one is black and white and a lower frame rate. A couple of interesting things. You don't get to see the shots because the frame rate won't catch them. But I also want to notice how far apart they are. There's a the bad guy and there's the officer. And like I said earlier, they are, you know, more than two car widths apart. The first officer is, is behind the car a good number of places. So if you're triangulating and those kind of things, knowing how wide cars are, how far apart they are, those kinds of things, you're looking about a seven to eight yard shot here. Now, that's one thing, but a seven to eight year yard shot on a moving target while you're under the stress of deadly threat, that's pretty significant marksmanship and that's why your skills need to be incredibly high on that day. If you're not ready on that day, you haven't practiced on that day, your chances to make this shot are abysmally low. You wanna get them 100% because on that day you're going to need those without any question. Now, as to why he would take a headshot in this instance, I think we can see once everything starts going that as it comes out, what you notice here is look at his backstop. The, you can see our bad guy is leaving. It's really hard to see the, the badge cam is super shaky. I, as much as I could try to, to uh, uh, stabilize it, man, it just wasn't happening. So, but if you notice, if he takes a center mass shot here, his backstop is cars and, and civilians and pedestrians that are coming and living on the strip. So aiming that up where he's got a little bit more of a chance to get that bullet out of a trajectory of danger, incredibly wise, really great thinking under duress there, also makes it a more difficult shot. Remember that idea of watching your backstop is the fact that you can and not miss. Also, you got to take this shot with some rapidity from the time that he brings the gun up to the time that the shot goes off from that, that kind of low ready position to bring it up and take the shot was only about four tenths of a second. So he didn't have a whole lot of time to sit and think about this shot. It had to happen and happen now. Your marksmanship needs to be unconsciously competent. You need to be able to do the things without thinking about them. And the only way to do that is to get them together and recognize that you have to, to own them. So then that way you can think about the problem. Now then, you notice at the very end here that our officer is going to walk up and verify that his threat is down. It was down very quickly. Getting that shot in the cranial vault ended that threat with rapidity. So if you can, that is the, the best and first way to end the threat definitively is that if I can get it into the cranial vault, shut the electrical system off on the person, that'll end the threat almost immediately, almost all the time. And that one did in this case. Awful lot to learn here about crazy bad guys, about the fibs factor both ways, about the incredible difficulty of real life marksmanship problems. That officer did an awesome job of covering his ASP.